This is a topic I've wanted to explore because I've always had a strong interest in tech. I've worked in both artistic and technical roles in the visual effects industry, so I've seen the magic behind the curtains and also written scripts to automate things for the artists working on them. I've always wanted to see how tech could expand into my hobbies like crochet, knitting, and sewing, which is usually the main focus of this channel. So here are the things I've made. These can be done within a few days if you have the right materials, so I'm going to share all the resources I used and walk you through how they work. First up is this Monarch Butterfly Spawn Point. It's a wall tapestry that makes a monarch butterfly appear when you view it through augmented reality. Augmented reality is an interactive experience that combines the real world and computer generated content. Unlike virtual reality, which is a totally artificial environment. So right now I'm viewing the tapestry through my phone and the butterfly is overlaid over top of it from the view of my phone. Devices like Google Glass and other smart glasses are another way of viewing augmented reality. Because tapestry crochet and color work for knitting has become very trendy, I think it would be cool to see these graphic designs have an extra layer of interaction. I did find that there are some best practices for it to actually read the design, but I'll get to that soon. So how does it work? To create this effect, I use Metasparks AR software, which is free to use and free to publish through. I first created my target image in Flosscross. It's best if the target image and the physical target have a high contrast. 4 to 1 color contrast. This is a general rule for QR code's color difference that I find also helps when picking yarn colors. Because crochet isn't pixel perfect, I want to make sure it's as clear as possible for the camera. So I took a picture of my dark yarn and light yarn and then color picked it in Photoshop to get the color code. And then I checked it in this contrast checker website. It's also good to have distinct directional marks. Kind of like tracking markers, it's better if it's directional and has some sharp corners so that the camera has something to track. That's why I made the marks on the wings kind of pointy, and you might notice there's also a cross in the middle. This is actually the second butterfly I made. The first one was too low contrast and wasn't getting identified by the camera. So that's where I got all these things. Since this is going to be hand crocheted, I had to keep in mind that not all the lines are going to be perfectly straight, so I did some surface crochet to help outline some things. There were also some general guidelines that Metaspark suggests for tracking, which I'll link below. So now that I have my target image, I'll bring it into Metaspark Studio. I created a target tracker in the scene section by using the plus sign. And then on the right side, I set the texture to the target image I made. For the butterfly object, I just used one of the free models from Sketchfab, the folder icon near the bottom left. This is a model library that Metaspark provides. There are tons of other models you can use here. So I bring it in by clicking import free and then it shows up in the asset section. Then I can just drag it under the target tracker. This means when the camera sees the target, the butterfly will appear. Then I scaled and rotated it down to a position I liked. To test it, I sent it to my phone, which already has the Spark Player app downloaded. Okay, cool. Now I'm pretty confident that the target image is working, so I'm going to crochet it. As usual, I started by chaining the number of squares for the width plus one. Then I follow the color pattern of the grid. I have another video of how to do this on my channel if you want to check it out. I used one half double crochet for each square, and then I did surface crochet to outline the center lines and the edges of these shapes. Then I tested it again just to be sure that the crochet target is working. Luckily, the model I used already came rigged because I also wanted to add some animation for the fluttering. So after expanding this model, you can find the left and right joint that control the wings. I just used the patch editor for procedural animation. I added a loop animation and transition node and then tweaked these values until it looked about right. I also added a light because I liked how it emphasized the wings. But now I'm ready to publish which is this button here. There are just a few things that the program will ask you to fill out to describe your AR effect for Instagram and Facebook to share it. And once Meta approves it, you can get a new sparkle section on your Instagram for filters, which other people can use. Overall, it works really well when pinned up as a wall tapestry. For wearables though, it might have more issues because it can be hard for the camera to find the design if it has a bend or a fold in it. But I might try to use micro crochet to make a really small one and sew it onto a sweater. And the AR effect only took a day to get approved by Metaspark, so it's already published to my Instagram. So I'd call this one a success. The next way of combining tech with fiber arts is actually designing in 3D software. You can design garments onto a 3D avatar, simulate the fabric, render it, and create actual pattern pieces you can use for a sewing pattern. There are two main softwares I've seen for this, which are Clo and Marvelous Designer, but I'm mainly going to be talking about Clo today. 
This is already being used in the fashion industry because of all the benefits to it. It's more environmentally friendly because there are fewer physical iterations needed, resulting in less wasted materials. This is because it's more accurate than a sketch. You can adjust the materials to be close to your actual fabric, so when it's simulated, it'll actually drape and act like it on the avatar's body. You can see how it moves by adding animation to the avatar and also use the renders for marketing materials. The only challenge I can see with this is that it does take time to learn. Now I'm brand new to clothes, so I did feel a little overwhelmed at first, but I've always found the best way to overcome that feeling when starting something new is to take a self-paced class on it. So that's why I'm taking classes for Chloe on Skillshare, which has very kindly sponsored today's video. There are so many great self-paced classes on Skillshare that cover everything from crafting to coding to freelance. To familiarize myself with the software, I watched all of Lemon Lee Pattern Making's classes. She walks you through the interface while working on your first project and shows you how to use tools like Internal Polygon and Cut and Sew to create this color black shirt. I like that she provides a starting file for your first project and then shows you how to take images of your design and later how to render them. The classes on Skillshare have a learn by doing approach, so the assignment for the Intro to Clo class was to design your own shirt, so here's mine. Clo also has many avatars that range from size 2 to 20, but for an even closer match, Lemon Lee Pattern Making has a tutorial on how to make a custom avatar to your dimensions. In her last class, she shows how to create a corset from your custom avatar and how to prepare it for a printed sewing pattern. If you also want to learn to use Clo to create your clothing designs in 3D, check out Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. There are even many classes on crochet, knitting, 3D modeling, and programming. You can make this year your year by investing in yourself and pick up the skills you've always wanted to try on Skillshare. I'd move quickly because the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So I've printed out the pattern and it's ready to use for cutting fabric. I'm still kind of a novice at technical sewing, so I'm going to save making this for a future video, but I'm going to conclude that this DIY was a great way to integrate tech into your designs for clothing. I'm going to try sewing my next design from Clo once I have a little bit more pattern sewing experience, but I'd call this one a success. On to the third DIY. I wanted to try incorporating some physical technology into my projects. After purchasing a Raspberry Pi starter kit, I was looking for some cool coding projects to do when I found this one on popsci.com for a DIY dance and revolution mat. There are three main components to this project, the Pi, the board, and the thread. The Raspberry Pi is an incredibly cheap and tiny computer. The series of computers were made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, a UK-based charity with the mission to educate young people in computing and create easier access to computing education. Mine is a little less than 4 inches with the case and it is $160 Canadian, but there are even cheaper and smaller ones than this. I actually bought this to learn Linux before I knew about virtual computers. People generally use the Raspberry Pi to learn programming skills, build hardware, do home automation. So that's the Pi. Now for the board, I'm using the Circuit Playground Express. This little device can sense light, sound, temperature, touch, and button presses. It can also make noise, color LEDs, and all of these aspects can be programmed for you to control. But for this project, I'm only using it for the touch sensors and LEDs. Now for the conductive thread. This is similar to ordinary sewing thread, but it has a small amount of metal incorporated into it so it can carry a small amount of voltage. So I pretty much followed the tutorial. Setting up the Raspberry Pi was straightforward because the micro SD card had the OS already installed to it. It also has you Git clone Step Mania, which is like the open source version of Dance Dance Revolution. When I was a kid, I actually went to a book fair and I bought this not knowing the difference. I skipped the speaker sections because I was going to use the monitor speakers. I also Git cloned the Dance Controller iNo, which tells the board what pins are a specific arrow. And this is uploaded to the board through the IDE. Once the setup was all done, I crocheted the DDR map and sewed the conductive thread through the arrows, I was really careful to avoid the threads touching each other so that they don't mix signals. Then I tied the threads into this terminal block and connected the corresponding arrow to the numbered sensor that was set in the dance controller I know. I actually made this mat a year ago and had to rethread some parts because I hadn't labeled the terminal block. So after some rethreading, I tested the sensors and they were working. One other thing I did differently from the tutorial was I changed the threshold to 800 as a valid signal. Even the first time I found it was too low and was too sensitive. Now if I touch the dance pad arrows, they'll light up as I expected. So now here's me testing it as the actual dance controller. 
I'd say this DIY is a success. I don't think it's super practical, but it's definitely a fun challenge, which is what I wanted going into it. I learned a bit of C++ modifying the dance controller. I usually code in Python, and I'm planning to try other projects with the Circuit Playground since it's such a versatile component. There was actually a fourth DIY that I was going to include in this video, but it ended up not working how I was hoping for. Basically, I wanted to bring in a design from Clo into Effect House for like an AR clothing try-on. I think I needed to rework the model and paint the rigging weights better, so hopefully I'll have that ready for you guys in a future video. If there was a project that caught your interest, share your thoughts in the comments below and I might create a more in-depth video on it. If you're like me and want to learn more about tech and fiber arts, be sure to be one of the first 500 people to use my link and get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. And for those of you who watched all the way through, comment a butterfly emoji so I know who the real ones are, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye for now!